And when you bring your bales to site, you want to make sure to, to spread them out around the house when you first unload them so you don't have them all you know, at one end of the house. You have to trudge them all the way through the house every time you want a new bale. So you try to spread some out on this end of the house, some in the middle, and some on the far side so that you're never having to walk too far to get your bales. Seems like a simple thing, but in reality, it's very often people will put their bales pretty far away from where they need them. And ultimately what that means is by the end of the day, people are really tired and not wanting to move their bales anymore. Now another thing that we do with when we're stacking our bales, or excuse me, retying our bales, is we look for where the knot is. You can see the original knot from the baling twine from the machine when it was baled is right on top here. I want to actually flip that over and have that on the bottom side. So now when I retie my bale and I send my twine through and I flip it over to make my knot, my cutoffs are right up on top and I can just take those little knots off and throw it away and then use the twine again for retying the second half of the bale. Now there are a couple different ways to retie a bale. One is to use two different colored twines and on the, on the baling needles that we have, there are a couple different slots you can use. So you can actually tie one piece of twine up on this end and another piece of twine down below that. Send them through at the same time, pull one color one direction, one color the other, and retie uh, two separate bales at the same time. This works pretty well, but with the knots that we're using today, the Miller's knot, it's just as easy to tie one end first, cut the strings, take the section that we've just tied away, use the same strings that were existing on the bale to then wrap the, the flakes that are loose and pull them tight with the knot. It's strong enough that it can actually get it stronger than it was originally baled. So it's a good way to go. I'm going to retie this bale at about 20 inches. It's a 40 inch bale, so I'm going to cut it in half. I want to make sure that on the ends here, sometimes they have a tendency to bubble out or to have some chaff that hangs out. I don't want to measure from that. I want to pat that down and find firm bale and eyeball my measurement off of that place. Now I'll take my needle and wrap twine over one of my hooks, line it up with the roughly 20 inch mark and plunge it in. Now I'm making sure to stay on the inside of the existing twine from the bale. That way, uh, as I said earlier, if I need to notch something out here, I'll know that I'll be at least inside the original twine, which will give me a little more room. I'm not really paying attention to which side is the cut side and which side is the bent side right now. I'm just going to keep both strings inside the original ones. Plunge it through and now I've got the table I've created here is two straw bales with a little bit of room in between them so that as I plunge these through, again keeping it on the inside here, as I plunge these through they don't get hung up in the bale below. They actually just dangle out in midair. I cut these pieces of twine that I'm using to about five feet, maybe a little bit more than five feet. Basically what that allows is for me to have enough to really pull on it to get a strong tie without wasting too much twine. Now you can see this twine came out on the inside, that's just fine. This one didn't. Because of the angle that I had my needle going in, it plunged it to the outside of this twine, so I want to make sure to put it back underneath and get it to the inside where I want it. Now although I measured the other way, this is a 40 inch bale that I'm cutting in half, so for ease, I'm going to cut it, I'm going to retie it this way, and I'll still end up with the same thing. Now I'll leave these long ties on the end. When I cut these original strings and this part of the bale peels off, I want to make sure if I've got some loose chaff, if I didn't get these exactly in the same place at that exact 20 inch mark, there may be some loose material here that I want to pull out to get a nice flat edge and then I want to be able to retighten that, that twine down. So now again, originally like I had said, we want to put the bale up so that the original lines here are exposed so we can see this little knot. So I can come in and cut that knot out without cutting my new twine. And I cut it right at the knot here on one side 
and then cut the knot off. Same thing on that side. Now I'm going to hold on to these, which will keep the rest of the flakes in place. Because like I said, I, you can do it with tying two directions at once, or you can do it this way where you just tie one direction. So I hold on to this so that the rest of my uh, flakes don't fall off of the table here. Loosen this up. This falls away, which leaves me with the other edge of this twine. Pull it to me, and because I've already cut those little knots off, I've got everything I need right here to tie a new system. I'm still holding onto the twine in my left hand so that I don't drop this whole front edge of the bale. This time I just want to gently secure that. I don't want to cinch it all the way yet until I know I'm ready and got my twine right where I want it. Example there, the twine started to move a little bit too far towards the edge, so I'll readjust it. Pull that part tight. Pull a little bit tight on this side. I can really start to cinch that up. Same thing on this side. So that's a very firm bale right now, just from loose flakes using the original twines that were there in place, not having to go through the whole process of trying to tie two bales at the same time. Leave my loops, but cut off my loose ends. That bale's done. Back to the original. I can check it now to see. It's a little bit of loose chaff in here, but not too bad. Came out pretty well, basically on the same flake, right where I wanted it. So I don't need to re-cinch these down. I can just cut off the excess. And this bale's ready to be put in the wall. Now we just created two bales, two 20-inch bales, so that as we're Doing the section that we've been starting on over here, we've got, as you recall, we have the low bale, the full bale, we're going to have a half bale, then we can fill in. When we need another half bale, we've got it ready now, even though we don't use it right now, it's on site and ready to be used.